Uh, good morning, dear viewers. Uh, we welcome you once again to this EDUSAT lecture. As you all are aware that uh, we are running a course uh, named Indian Writing in English Translation and there are various scholars associated in this course with us. Uh, today we are honored to have Professor Anand Prakash with us. Uh, welcome sir. Uh, Professor Anand Prakash is an eminent academician and has been associated with our endeavor since long and uh, his contributions are really uh, to be noted and they are really worthy. Uh, today the topic of uh, the lecture is Kali Dasa's Abhigyan Shakuntalam. Uh, I hope that uh, today's lecture will enlighten you. Uh, now I would request Professor Anand Prakash to uh, start with the presentation, the lecture today. Thank you, Anjali, <coughs> and uh, welcome viewers. As has been announced <coughs> by our able anchor, uh, today's lecture is on uh, Adityan Shakuntala. Uh, because it's a Sanskrit word, and uh, it has become popular also, yet, you know, uh, the spellings create a problem. Because Gya in uh, Sanskrit is uh, uh, written in English, uh, spelt in English as J-N, because the, that's the root, you know, uh, word there. But uh, for our purposes, I think uh, G H uh, G Y would be as good because this is how we pronounce the word in our daily conversation. So I uh, decided to spell this word Abhigyan as Abhigyan, that is A B H I G Y A N rather than A B H I J N A N A. That's the original Sanskrit uh, spelling uh, in English. Uh, <coughs> uh, Abhigyan Shakuntalam is one of the now, uh, why one of the, perhaps the best known play from India? Uh, it's uh, popular all over the world and uh, it's a play that, uh, you know, uh, earned the distinction to its writer, Kalidas, uh, you know, Shakespeare of India. It's a, it's a very strange thing that a senior person and senior by more than a century, uh, you know, is, is compared with somebody and, and is uh, named after that person because uh, as, as all of us know, Shakespeare was in the late 16th, early 70th centuries. But then uh, th that's our way of, you know, uh, paying tribute to people. And uh, since we were a colony till the other day, till 1947, and we always looked up to the British as our mentors, guides, people who inspired us. Therefore, whatever is great there is supposed to be great in the colony also. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a strange but understandable that uh, Kalidas is called the Shakespeare of India. But uh, that's no reflection on Shakespeare. In fact, uh, my personal view is that Shakespeare, perhaps, arguably, one can say, the best author that humankind produced. Uh, he can be compared with the, the ancients, he can be compared with the uh, writers in the medieval period, he can be compared with the contemporary periods, and I don't think any writer so far has excelled the vision and breadth of outlook of uh, Shakespeare. So that way uh, we understand that <clears throat> when we compare Kalidas with Shakespeare, then we are comparing two gi giants of uh, literature uh, in different languages, in Sanskrit, so far as Kalidas is concerned, and in English, as uh, uh, you know, Shakespeare's name goes. So, uh, <clears throat> Abhigyan Shakuntalam is a natak. It's, it's, it's a play. It's, it's, a, it's a piece of theater. And uh, this was played uh, in Kalidas's own time. Uh, and uh, all of us uh, would be, you know, always thinking as to uh, when Kalidas wrote this play and who was Kalidas and, uh, you know, in which time he lived. Uh, once again, uh, as in the case of other ancient writers, so in the case of Kalidas, uh, there is no certainty about the date, about the time and the context. Uh, <clears throat> even today, when uh, so much, uh, you know, uh, uh, set of, uh, su such a uh, great set of, uh, you know, uh, standards, of judging things is available to us. Uh, we uh, still, you know, uh, can't uh, locate uh, Kalidas in a particular century. Uh, these days, you know, we, we locate a person in, in, in the case of a year, in the case of a month. But in the case of uh, ancient writers like Kalidas, even centuries don't matter. So one version is that of, his, of the information is that Kalidas lived somewhere in the uh, uh, pre-Christian era, uh, in, in, the, in the centuries AD. And uh, mention is made of, uh, you know, 1st century, 2nd century, 3rd century BC. And, uh, you know, then there are others who say that uh, he was in, in, in the post-Christian uh, uh, era, uh, when the Christian era had begun, 
which means that he was in the AD and therefore first and uh, first second third century AD. So there is a span of you know five six hundred years of when you know uh, Kalidas would have been born and would have written these plays, uh, and one of these plays is Abhigyan Shakuntalam. Uh, <coughs> But there is a, a large number of scholars, uh, you know, uh, who say that uh, Kalidas was in the uh, post, you know, uh, Christ era, and uh, that he would be uh, sometime in the second or third third century A.D., and uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, somehow associated uh, culturally and uh, literarily uh, from, from the point of literature uh, with the Chandragupta II, Chandragupta Vikramaditya II, not the first, and therefore he would be somewhere in the third century A.D. Anyway, uh, th this is a, a matter to be uh, decided by the uh, scholars and by the historians, and uh, we don't have much to do with it, except you know that uh, our understanding of his play would have been better, would have been more focused if we knew exactly when he was operative in the field of culture. But then, since that information is not available, therefore we make do with uh, whatever uh, is, is believed, and uh, whatever text is there in front of us. And the text is a big uh, 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 And uh, you know, uh, what, what, what does this word mean, abhigyan? Uh, there are uh, in English the equivalent would, should have been knowledge, perhaps should have been understanding. But then uh, people have agreed, you know, that abhigyan would be a recognition. And recognition means pehchan. You know, uh, uh, you, you you understand, you realize, you 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 come to know. And, and, and then you identify, that is pehchan. So recognition is the word that is used for Abhigyan and Shakuntala is the uh, narrative of Shakuntala, narrative about Shakuntala. So the first thing is Abhigyan or recognition and uh, uh, it also assumes you know, that there is a time when the main character of the play, Shakuntala that is, uh, is not clear about the kind of world that she inhabits and the kind of you know, set of relationship that she has. And therefore, she will take time to understand as to how people behave, uh, what, what, what people intend when they you know, have a relationship with a woman. And uh, the most intimate and important decisive relationship of a woman, woman in Indian condition and ethos is the relationship in marriage. And uh, what, does, what, what does marriage mean? What, what kind of uh, you know, uh, intimacy uh, it would suggest and, you know, uh, and would assure? These are the questions, you know, that a woman is confronted with. And uh, maybe this woman, uh, Shakuntala, uh, would recognize the reality at her own cost. When she understands, you know, that the world is not what she thought to be, uh, thought it to be, and that it became different. So this recognition on her part of the reality of her own time and the reality of, uh, you know, uh, positions and uh, structures that existed at the time, this is what the play is about. So uh, once she, uh, you know, is there in the world and she starts becoming, uh, you know, uh, conscious about people, uh, about, you know, the atmosphere, about ideology, about ideas, all those things, then later she comes to the conclusion of a kind. And that conclusion, that recognition is Abhigyan. There is a literal meaning also of Abhigyan and that meaning is that uh, there is a ring there, the ring that we wear on our fingers and uh, this ring will uh, compel somebody to get back to the, the, the point of memory. Uh, you, you forget and then one day you remember. And the point of remembering in the play is connected with the ring. And therefore, that is recognition. That you recognize that, that there is a ring, the king recognizes that, uh, that uh, this, king, uh, this ring was there. And on that basis, he goes back to the time when he, which he had forgotten about. So uh, this multi-layered kind of association of the, uh, you know, uh, title uh, with the the theme and, and, and then the structure of the play, uh, that is what is to be kept in mind as we discuss the play. Then you know, uh, <coughs> so far as Shakuntala is concerned and uh, our, our viewers, uh, I'll try to uh, just uh, take this point also, that if, the, if a play is about a woman, and uh, th then you know, uh, the position of women at that time would be not as bad as we, we, we think it would be. So it's a play about a woman, it's a play about Shakuntala. It's not a play about others, and it's not like Vikram Urvashi, Vikram and Urvashi are there, the same, uh, another play by uh, Kalidas. It's a play about Shakuntala. It revolves around her dilemmas, her difficulties. It's a play about the, the way she is able to cope with and negotiate with these difficulties. Therefore, I keep in mind that it's a, uh, it's a play about a woman, and a woman's perspective, 
either will be clouded by uh, other perspectives, the male perspectives or it will finally emerge. So that is the uh, question that is being posed uh, indirectly through the uh, narrative by, through the presentation by the writer. Now uh, <clears throat> as in the case of most of the ancient writing, uh, the uh, story or the plot of a play or, 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 or an epic uh, would not be invented. Not that you know you just close your eyes and uh, then you ask yourself, what should I write about? Uh, it's not that kind of writing at all at that time, not like today. Therefore, when somebody starts writing, then one latches on to, one picks up a tale already available. This is the case with most of the writing in the ancient period. And uh, well, the two great uh, uh, you know, uh, narratives or epics that are all already available uh, around that time, 2000 years and more ago, the, the, they being you know, uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata. So uh, people will pick up episodes from these epics at that time and then they will rework them uh, in, in their own plays or in their own other you know, literary pieces. And uh, in the case of Shakuntala, the narrative has been straight away picked up from Mahabharata. And uh, you know, uh, therefore, you, know, you should keep in mind, I should keep in mind while discussing this play that the story of Shakuntala is already available with Kalidas. He has read it. He has gone into the details of it. He has visualized, you know, uh, uh, things uh, that happen in the play here uh, on the basis of what he read. He is interpreting that thing later. So Mahabharata will talk about Shakuntala, will talk about Dushyant, and we will we'll tell the whole story. But there will be a story in an epic. And uh, when the story is an epic, then uh, different other points are emphasized. But when there is a play, the play has to be of a certain length. It has to be three hours long on the stage. And the writer cuts out many things and at the same time brings some other things into focus. And since the playwright is writing this particular play at a time when the story has been around for four or five hundred years, therefore uh, he will not uh, present the story that was there in the original source. He will tell his own story and that story he has heard but then when he is telling, then in the telling you know. Uh, this, this will become his story or it will become a new story. So this, this is the interesting fact and uh, let me right in the beginning tell you that uh, Shakuntala, uh, uh, the, the woman uh, you know, who marries uh, uh, Andushyant in Mahabharat is a very tough, a very strong woman. And uh, you know when the king later on after he has you know, uh, uh, slept with her, he has he's married her, he has produced a baby with her and, and, and the person is uh, already there. She, uh, takes the son along with her and goes to meet Dushant. And Dushant refuses to recognize both the woman and the son. And he says he doesn't know. And uh, of course he knows, but he says he doesn't know. And later on, you know, when there is an intervention from elsewhere, and in those days, you know, uh, uh, 2500 years ago or so, or 2000 years ago, uh, the intervention would come not from any outer source, after all, Dushyant is a king, so the outer source has to be not on the earth, but somewhere else. It has to be uh, somewhere among the gods. So gods will intervene. And when he hears the voice of God, or of a god, Indra for instance, Indra is a very powerful god at that time, uh, so the, he, he would say, okay, now he recognizes. That's a very funny part, that the person is not being true, true to himself. The person is uh, telling the woman that he doesn't, doesn't recognize her. And uh, then, you know, uh, this uh, 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 Shakuntala in Mahabharata is a very strong woman and she's very angry. And, uh, you know, she says that uh, how, how come this person doesn't recognize? So, so she, she starts arguing with him. So on one side you have a king, on the other side you have a woman, you know, uh, who, who is being neglected and, and you know, uh, who is angry because of this. So she comes up, Shakuntala in Mahabharata comes up as a very strong woman. And there, there is a tussle and uh, later on, you know, uh, rather, uh, I, I would use the word today, without being any, you know, uh, embarrassment, the king finally says, okay, uh, I, I remembered her, I, I knew her, but I had to tell a lie. Because otherwise, you know, if I told everybody that uh, this was my wife and this child that, that she was coming with, uh, was my child, so what would my own subjects think? He makes it very clear. But when God said, you know, that you have to do it because you actually married, then I know, he says, that there is a godly sanction for me. And now I know that my uh, position is respectable in society. Uh, well, uh, uh, controversially speaking, uh, this kind of a dilemma in the Ramayana, Sita also faced. 
uh, in, in the sense, you know, that the man was embarrassed to, to, to accept, you know, uh, 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 the protagonist uh, 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 was embarrassed and he would not accept uh, the, the, the woman as his wife even though he had married her uh, in full view and she was the queen and she was supposed to be the queen. But somebody raises a question that she has been away from her husband and you know, all those things, you know about it. And uh, then, you know, uh, uh, the, the wife has to pass through a test and the test is through uh, fire and there she has to prove her chastity. There she has to prove her qualities uh, and, and her loyalty. And then, of course, you know, know the whole story. So, uh, Shakuntala's case is more or less the same as that of this person, you know, uh, who is one of the protagonists in uh, uh, Ramayan. So, uh, you can see the parallels going on. Uh, Ramayan's, uh, you know, narrative would be available. Uh, Mahabharata narrative was available when Kalidas wrote. There's a gap of four, five hundred years. And people have been, uh, you know, discussing these things or, or at least, you know, uh, witnessing in their mind. And, and maybe sometimes when they talk, uh, they, then they will be uh, uh, tackling this issue also in their neighborhood. And the story was quite popular. That's one version. So we, uh, Kalidas has a version in front of him. And uh, he's, he's working on this version. And, uh, uh, you know, the, sometime, uh, I, I have to say this right in the beginning as, as a matter of introduction, that when you write an epic, you're directly talking to the bigger audience. There is a singer. There, 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 there is a you know, company of singers. And, and they move around from one place to another. They go to the villages and they sing poetry. And in poetry, they talk about all kinds of things. And when the audience is, uh, an audience would be the common masses in, in the village. And they are singing, you know, songs about old tales. And uh, sometimes when the singer looks at people, they are excited and they are very happy or they are smiling or they are very angry. Then he starts, you know, emphasizing certain points on his own. Uh, because he, he's, he's getting now a good feedback from the audience. So um, the presentation in an epic becomes, uh, you know, uh, totally excited, uh, 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 full of excitement and appealing. And therefore, the person is, uh, uh, you know, inspired to speak more and more. So when you speak more and more about a tale which is already popular, which means that you are adding something to it. So that is the epic. And in the epic, you know, this kind of a, a story where the woman finally, you know, uh, got her place, but then she got her place through argument and not through any kind of charity or any kind of sympathy or understanding or pity on, on, on the part of the spouse, on the part of the husband. Therefore, that story of a strong Shakuntala is there at the back of people's mind when they watch this play. I said in the beginning that it's a play, not an epic. And because it's a play, it's meant to be represented on the stage. And in those days when Kalidas would have written this and when Kalidas would have staged it, or somebody else would have you know, given him help to stage it. At that point of time, people did not have uh, an access to uh, the, the stage. And this kind of a stage that, that, that is supposed to be there uh, in the case of this uh, play, which is very sophisticated, unlike the epic, which is very popular, which is very raw, which has a different kind of energy. The, the play is uh, very well crafted. It's very well planned. There are speeches, you know, that there are pauses that, and there are certain, uh, you know, uh, emphases on, 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 and uh, uh, then, then these pauses and emphases that they, they point out to the people who are watching the play that uh, they have to be, uh, you know, very evolved and intelligent and alert while watching the play in order to enjoy it. So when this play is enacted, you can assume, I can assume that, you know, uh, the audience would not have been more than, let's say, a hundred people. It would have been in a co court king's court, the king uh, would be there, maybe his uh, uh, queen also is there sitting next to him. And this play is being presented by uh, a writer, by, by a theatre person uh, through a natak and then people enjoy. And because the high and mighty, the courtiers, it's this court play, would be sitting there, so the writer has to keep in mind the fact <clears throat> that he should not rub people on the wrong side. He should not make, make anybody angry and irritate. And therefore, you can't be free when you are writing a play for the court. And Kalidas, the great writer, then observes all the norms of acceptability, all the norms of the right kind of appeal and the right kind of message. And therefore, he will use the old material, but he will present a picture that appeals to and that endears itself uh, to the audience which is watching it. So play that way is different. So what does Kalidas do in the play? Uh, well, there is a king who is very powerful. Uh, he is known all over the world as, as its protector. And uh, he protects, you know, the rishis and munis in their ashrams. 
and if some people, Rakshasas, come from outside, the demons come from outside, then he would punish them and he would drive them away so that everybody is living uh, you know, at peace and, and, and in a state of calm and tranquility. And uh, this uh, you know, king then goes on a wild hunt. So he has all the horses uh, under his command, his soldiers are there next to him and he enters the forest and there he uh, goes after you know, uh, wild animals and he will kill some and uh, in, uh, on, on the way you know, when so many horses and so many uh, warriors and so many people would be entering the forest then there will be some kind of destruction also of the creepers, of the, of the small plants, even of the trees sometimes you never know. And uh, the, the king is uh, you know, in a great uh, mood to uh, you know, uh, capture uh, wild animals so he's, and he's a very strong person. So this scene is shown in the play. And when this scene is shown, suddenly at one point of time when the king gets tired, then he enters, wrongly or rightly, a hermitage, an ashram. And uh, ashram people are totally different. They, they, they believe in peace. They don't believe in any kind of violence, any kind of hunt. They, they don't hunt animals. And, and uh, hunting animals at that time also uh, would not be exactly like, liked by the people in the ashram. So he enters the ashram and there he is face to face with a woman. What kind of a woman is she? So far as this, I'm talking about the Shakuntala and uh, the, the, the king is Dushyant. So Dushyant goes on a hunting expedition. Uh, he, he then w uh, enters the her hermitage and there there's a young woman. The, uh, one, one can guess the young woman. She would be around uh, 18, maybe 20. And uh, she's very innocent. She has not been in company with uh, the males as we, as, as we call. She, she has not seen any neighborhood. She is herself an ascetic. She doesn't wear good clothes. She, she wears the dress of the ashram, which in those days would be made by the, uh, you know, the, the, the leaves or by, by the, the, the uh, you know, bark of the trees. So, and uh, if cloth can be made of the bark of the tree, then she'll be wearing that. And uh, uh, so far as ornaments are concerned, a beautiful young woman uh, would not have gold and all, or jewels and pearls. She would only have flowers. So she will cover, you know, you know, she will put flowers on her head, on, on, on her shoulders. She will wear, you know, a kind, kind of small garland around her, you know, arms and wrist. And maybe even around the, uh, you know, the, the middle part of the body, which is called girdle, or, or maybe even legs. And she is moving around in that kind of free state. And the king has seen this kind of beauty for the first time. And uh, Kalidas is describing the beauty also at the physical level, that, that she is very attractive as a person and he's talking about different parts of her body. And then he says that the king is totally enamored by her. And uh, then, you know, uh, the woman also is, uh, has seen this kind of a person for the first time in her life. So she also yeah, gets interested, uh, you know, uh, uh, has a kind of interest in him to know, to find out who this person is and why he's looking at her so very, uh, you know, uh, 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 liking in such a manner and, and so, so much appealingly. So all, all this she understands and she knows. and a kind of awareness, a kind of awakening of the uh, desires happen in her at that time. And the two fall in love. It's a kind of love at first sight as we call it today. And uh, then, you know, uh, the king proposes that, you know, that uh, I should marry her. And, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, uh, he promises to her that uh, he'll make her his, his, his queen. And uh, uh, he's on a hunting expedition, so when he goes away, then of course uh, he uh, he will call he will send people who will uh, escort her from this place to the palace and there there she will be with the queen, and then you know he has moments of intimacy with her and she gets pregnant, and uh, it is at that st uh, it's just before that state uh, uh, after he has you know enjoyed her company it is at that state that he leaves the place. Did Shakuntala at that point of time take permission from her elders in the ashram whether whether she should enter into a kind of relationship? This is a question, you know, that, that, that will be there in our mind. And it was the uh, norm also, but, but Shakuntala was guided by the, the senior women of the, of, of the ashram. And she was guided by her own friends and her father, supposed father, because the uh, uh, ashram's uh, head, you know, is not her father, but she is called, you know, uh, his daughter. Uh, there is another story uh, regarding this and Kalidas is making full use of it. Of course, this story is also there in the Mahabharata version, but here is making full use of it. And he says, you know, that uh, it was a, uh, uh, the, the, she was the daughter of a couple who had a very strange kind of alliance. The, 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 the husband was uh, the rishi, 
and he had to be dislodged from his uh, you know uh, exalted uh, place and therefore a nymph came an apsara came from elsewhere and it was un, uh, you know from, from the antapur of uh, uh, indra she came here her name was menka and uh, she uh, uh, distracted the great ascetic uh, from his uh, uh, you know state of worship and and finally you know uh, shakuntala was uh, born with the union of the rishi the sage and so uh, one knows that uh, uh, shakuntala has this kind of a mixed blood she is the daughter of a nymph uh, apsara and also of a great saint from uh, this world so this history you know is is working for kalidas much better than in the case of mahabharat the so kalidas is making full use of it that after all everybody knows that she is a, a half goddess and she she is the daughter of a god a goddess herself or, or an apsara and therefore she has those qualities now this to be uh, kept in mind uh, you know a uh, while uh, you know uh, when uh, i'll be presenting this dilemma a little further and i'll also uh, give you uh, some points about the text uh, later because the text will tell us all that i'm saying in the uh, substantiated form thank you <laughs>
uh, Kalidas in the play itself. That happens because uh, he left uh, 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 Shakuntala, uh, uh, when, when he went away, he left her completely immersed in love. And she was so much in, immersed in love in the memory of the moments of, of happiness uh, with, with, with her husband, whom she had married you know, in the Gandharva uh, uh, style. So she uh, was not able to listen to anything else in life. And at that point of time, a great saint came, a great sage came uh, for, for his bhiksha. And uh, he called out from outside and uh, she, she would not uh, you know, uh, hear his words and she kept sitting and the sage became angry that he is asking for this and she is not coming outside so she is not courteous. So he left a curse against her and the curse was that whosoever she is thinking about, he will forget her. And later on of course other people heard it so they went after him and they, they uh, caught up with him and they said sir how can you do it and it is a young girl and she is uh, why did you give such a, such a strong curse to her so please uh, tell some method and so that you know this, this curse can be undone and he said okay i can't completely do it i will not uh, completely do it i am very angry but okay uh, if uh, uh, the king uh, you know sees some relic sees, sees some uh, you know some, something you know that is associated with her, then he will remember that uh, you know, he, was, uh, he was the one who married her and uh, the, this, the relic would be the, the, the ring, the signet uh, and, and the, if he gave her a ring, so uh, which means that if she shows a ring to him, then he will remember. So uh, Kalidas has uh, you know, uh, devised this particular trick for the play and uh, therefore uh, the fault is not on Dushyant here. Unlike there, where he said you know, he deliberately did it uh, because he wanted to, and he explained. But in this case, the uh, case of the king is genuine. He, he doesn't remember because there is a curse on uh, his wife, and uh, it's because of this that he has completely forgotten. So this is the case, and uh, Kalidas is able to circumvent all these problems, and uh, the, that's how you know towards the end, uh, when uh, uh, that, that ring is initially uh, lost. And she is found, it is found again. And then Adushyanta remembers that you know the, the woman came and she was pregnant. She, she was not walking with the son, she was pregnant. And uh, he didn't recognize her, so he asked her to leave. And she left and uh, he, he has been all the, all the time full of remorse. And uh, towards the end, you know, somebody finds the ring in a pond in, 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 in the stomach of a fish. And when that fisherman cuts the uh, fish for, uh, for, for cook, cooking it, then he realized that there is a ring inside so it, uh, and he is caught in the meantime by the policeman and he is brought before the court that he is a thief who has got uh, the ring from somewhere and he tells and the moment the king sees the ring he remembers that he has be, be, been very cruel to his wife. So this is how the play ends. So finally in both the uh, you know narratives in the Mahabharata narrative and in the uh, Kalidas narrative the uh, couple joins the, the couple at, at the end you know, uh, uh, they, 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 they understand each other, they, they love each other and then the problem is resolved. So this is a play which is uh, where, you know, there is a lot of pain in the middle of it but at the end everything works fine because the reconciliation has happened and a recognition has happened in the case of uh, the, the protagonist here. So this is, this is the plot line of the play and uh, the, 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 this plot line suggests many things. Uh, for instance, uh, I can raise the questions of, uh, <coughs> you know, the society at that time, the rules it followed, the norms it had about matrimony. Uh, one had to be very loyal, or one had to be totally focused on the relationship between man and wife. And if somehow the relationship became sore, if it became bad, then it was incumbent on the woman to make amends or, or she would be punished. The man would just get scot free. And even though Kalidas or the writer of Mahabharata would not have thought of it, their society was different and the women didn't have any position of authority at, at that point of time. Therefore, they would not bother about this question, they would take it as some kind of a natural thing. But we as moderns, we living in the 20th, 20th and 21st century, we realize that all of us are human beings irrespective of the sex, irrespective of the fact whether, whether we are men or women. Now this kind of thing was not there at that time. Therefore, in the text we have uh, the, this question of society social norms, social beliefs, social principles and uh, suddenly we become aware that we are not reading uh, uh, or, or watching a play uh, associated with our own conditions. We are watching a play which was written earlier when society was of this kind. 
So these are the questions you know that, that have to be raised for comparison and contrast. The other would be matrimony itself. That in matrimony, the woman has the second position, not the first position. She doesn't have any uh, any, any choice there. And uh, men, you know, in those days, uh, could marry uh, uh, many women. Uh, the Shant already had a number of women, and 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 he says it uh, openly uh, to others. And it was accepted, you know, that a man could marry uh, 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 more than uh, one woman, and 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 could be, uh, you know, he was expected to be, you know, just to all. But then, at that point of time, uh, the, the the senior woman in in the house would enjoy certain, uh, you know, uh, authority, certain rights, which will not be available to the other women. So there was a kind of tussle between one woman and the other. If there are four or five women, then the most important is the one who is the senior. And uh, what I what do I mean by uh, importance? But what uh, that that's, that the woman is uh, the, the patrani, let's say the the, the main you know uh, prince, uh, prince uh, the main uh, queen uh, in in the case of a king. Why is uh, she called a patrani? What, what is so special about her? And this, you know, this, this once again that this question is there in the case of Ramayana, and this question is there in the case of others also. And uh, the reason was that the senior woman, her son would be the claimant to the throne. This also is there in the in the epic that I'm talking about. This is also in the case of others. So women, you know, when, when they uh, when when the king proposed at that point of time to a woman or sent a message to a woman or to her father you know, that he wanted to marry her, then the father or the woman herself would ask. Uh, I'll I'll marry you. Uh, uh, if, uh, will will you you know if, if I if I produce a son, will will that son be a claimant to the throne? So this question of you know the son of 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 a particular woman having a claim on the throne, this question is is a part of matrimony. So matrimony is not just a, a relationship between two men and uh, two two human beings, a man and a woman, and that uh, okay they they, they remain together and, and they love each other and, and they enjoy each other's company. It's not that. It's a question of authority and power, and in the case of kings and queens, and also in the case of ordinary people, if you have some property, then the pro most of the property would go to the eldest son or or, or the son of the uh, eldest wife. So this kind of principle is there, and this brings in uh, the uh, idea of and the morality of matrimony in jeopardy. That there, there is a kind of a critique there as to how you know you can be untrue to and cruel to and partial to. Uh, certain women in preference to others. So th this kind of a thing is to be kept in mind because these questions, you know, after all, uh, even if it's art and it's supposed to entertain us, one of the functions of art is to make us aware about the principles of existence uh, in our own life. So this question is there. Then there is romance. Does, does romance have a place in life? Romance means the idea of imagination where, uh, you know, you feel happy in your mind and that you want to remain happy in your mind. And one way to remain happy in one's mind is to listen to music or or, or, or to watch a you know, dance performance. Or, or, and in the dance, you know, there is a story. And in the story, the uh, the highlights of the body of the woman, uh, the, the highlights of the of the beauty of the woman, the highlights of the bravery of the man, the qualities of the man. It is these, you know, that create a state of romance for us. So this romance is there quite a lot in the play. And the state, what kind of a king was there? What were his policies? What kind of a, a you know a court he uh, presided over, how he distributed justice uh, in, in life? All these things are then important, and they are there in the case of uh, Abhijyan Shakuntalam. This play, because the king receives his guests uh, 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 when he is surrounded by his own officials, and uh, sometimes you know there is a person sitting next to him who is, who is a chamberlain. The, the, then there is a person you know who is who is the police officer. There is a third person who is an advisor. The fourth person uh, who keeps him company to entertain him. That that also is a part of the court, you know. That the king has to remain relaxed all the time. And if some there is some there is some tense moment, then some somebody should be there to talk uh, with with you humorously. So there is also a court jester. There has to be maskara. There has to be a person who will be next to you and who can crack jokes at your cost, so that you remain always calm and quiet and undisturbed. So this is the kind of you know state that we had. And uh, that, that state should be compared. If we are alert, you know, watchers of uh, viewers of uh, theatre, uh, then we should be able to see as to what kind of state was there at that time, what flaws it had, what facilities it had, what norms it 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 it, it went by, and comparably, what norms are we guided by today? And then we can compare and contrast and uh, reach a kind of uh, you know uh, alternative vision 
about the state today. So these questions, uh, viewers, uh, uh, all of us know that uh, literacy is not merely for reading and, and, and enjoying, it is also for uh, becoming aware about serious things in life, because after all, enjoyment also is not a very pure uh, category. So these things are there, uh, so we will we'll, uh, uh, be referring to this uh, later, but uh, I, I now will uh, take up uh, the question of uh, <coughs> the text. I already told you the story, I told you the dilemmas, I will also told the end. So now let us have a look at the text. I, I have still, you know, a few minutes to, uh, you know, take examples from the text. This is what, you know, uh, uh, appealed to me as I was reading the play in the first act. This play has seven acts and uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very well, it's a very, very theatre worthy play, very stage worthy play. If this play can be, you know, uh, presented uh, today also on the stage in, in a good two and a half or three hours and this will be a hit because this play is so wonderfully well written. This play has no flaws in it and it has so much of, uh, you know, uh, uh, precision, so much of focus and, and, and it is such a witty play. And uh, you know, Kalidas is supposed to be one of the finest poets from the point of view of comparisons, which in English uh, you know, are called similes. So just read the similes. Uh, when when uh, a, a character is making a point, and uh, he cannot make this point very well directly, therefore he will say, okay, now I am quoting a verse. So he will quote a verse, and he will quote just two, three lines, and with those, those three lines, you become aware of the complexity of the issue that he is presenting, and then you get the answer. So Kalidas is great in that respect also. And uh, the level of style, you can see that people talk in prose. People didn't talk in prose earlier in, in the text. Mahabharata is all poetry. Uh, in Mahabharata, even, even Gita is poetry, which is a book of philosophy. Even that is poetry. But later on, people talked in prose, but when it came to wisdom, then they would use verse. So you have verse, you have two line shloka uh, in the middle and uh, the, the person is talking and talking and then he uses a shloka, a, a two line or a three line thing, basically two lines because shloka means a kind of, uh, of a couplet. So king is entering the hermit, uh, entering the forest and uh, how is he entering? He is on a chariot and uh, it is driven by uh, four horses or a number of horses and uh, he has the reins or somebody else has the, holds the reins but he is just having the uh, you know, bow and arrow in his hands and uh, the moment he spots an animal, he will shoot at the animal and kill it. So that kind of a scene and uh, see Kalidasa's imagination in this play and th these are just four lines and he is telling you how speed is you know, uh, appreciated by uh, people there. These horses, says the king, would outrace the steeds of the sun. The sun is also supposed to have a chariot and the, the sun Suraj, it also has a, has a chariot and it always moves, you know, uh, 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 around the earth as, as, as they said at that time, it goes around the earth and the speed is so much that it has, it has to cover it in 12 hours. So, uh, but uh, Kalida says these horses would outrace the steeds of the sun. What is small suddenly looms large. Of course, these days uh, we also have aeroplane to, to, to fly uh, 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 in, you know, and uh, uh, we can understand what speed is. But in those days, if the horse was, uh, if the chariot was being driven at a very fast speed, then this is what happens. The small suddenly looms large, split forms seem to reunite. Things are actually separate, but when, when there is a great speed, then they unite. Bent shapes straighten before my eyes from the chariot speed nothing ever stays distant or near. So those things which are near, they become distant and vice versa. This, this, is, the, this is the imagination of Kalidas in this uh, play. So we have a caller with us. Okay, if there is a call, yeah. I would like to. Yes, please. We have a call, I think. Uh, the caller can proceed. The question can be asked. We have the expert Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, First, uh, I will thank you uh, to sir to give such a wonderful lecture. Hmm. Thank you. Yes. Please, please ask your question. So, I have a question, sir. Please tell your name and the place from where you are speaking. So my question is, I want to know the characteristic of the Kuntla and my second question is, 
I I want to know about uh, the gender gap and gender divide in Abhijan Sakuntalam. Okay, uh, the gender divide, divide, I understand. What is the first question? The character of uh, Shakunt Shakuntala. He wants to have a view on the character of uh, Shakuntala. And uh, uh, please tell your name. Okay. <coughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good question you are asking, <coughs> partly I have answered it, but I would like to repeat this. You know, this, uh, this is a uh, play, you know, which uh, talks about the gender division, men and women. How are they separate? How are they different? How is their relationship? Is it based on equality? And, uh, you know, as, as you rightly asked the question, uh, the play is about a woman and the kind of ordeal, the kind of difficult phase through which she passes. So, this is a gender question. You know that there is, a, there is an authority, there is a power structure which is controlled by men and that in those power structures lives a woman and uh, her life, you know, is disturbed and this life, uh, you know, finally has to be brought back to normalcy. So, this is a gender question and the, she suffers not because she is a human being but because she is a woman. So, this is one and secondly, so far as Shakuntala is concerned, uh, she has her supporters uh, and her supporters are there in the ashram. Uh, and and in, in the city, there are people who will not sympathize with her, they will ridicule her, they will laugh at her, they will call her you know, some, so somebody you know who doesn't know etiquettes and all. But then you can see that uh, she can, uh, in those days, uh, the, uh, I'm talking about those days, the person could straight away go and meet the king. And this uh, person, uh, this lady, this woman from the ashram who came, you know, uh, attend, uh, uh, assisted by her uh, uh, ashram mates, she came to the city supposedly city at that time and she went to the king. The king was, uh, uh, was, was, was uh, you know, good enough to, uh, good to, uh, to uh, uh, allow her inside and she talked to him directly. So, you know, the, there were men and women and they could at that point of time talk to the king also. So, these things are quite important uh, from, the, from the point of view of, uh, you know, gender question there and, uh, you know, the, there, is, there is a kind of Gandharva Viva which means, you know, that uh, you meet a woman and you like the woman, the woman also likes you and she agrees to marry you and in that case, you can just put a garland around his neck and he will put back a garland around your neck and both of, both, both, both will be married. So, these things, you know, in convention, in, 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 in you know, uh, rites and rituals, uh, in, in, in the case of, uh, uh, you know, uh, other things. So, th this is what the gender question at that time emerges as. And you know, it's heavily tilted against the woman and it's uh, almost entirely tilted on the side of men. And yet, you know, the women are able to, because of the help that they get and, and, and from celestial divine support, because the celestial and divine, divine support in this play comes from Tulsidas's own head, uh, Kalidas's own head. So, Kalidas decides, you know, that the woman, when the, the woman uh, is helpless, then gods will help her and, you know, the chance will help her fate will help her and the entire ashram is behind her, good people are behind her. So, even though the gender division is there, but then there is a kind of subtlety, there is a kind of beauty, there is a kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 <coughs> good quality about the woman that uh, all the ashramites are with her and all the people, you know, who are there in the audience, then or now, they will also be seeing, you know, that she is the agreed party. And therefore, the sympathies of, of most most of the people would be with Shakuntala. So these are the questions that would, that have to be uh, you know kept in mind while appreciating this play. And and I'm glad that you asked asked this question. And uh, I hope uh, the, 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 uh, you'll be uh, satisfied with uh, the answer that I've given you. So I have uh, <coughs> a few points to make now. Uh, so I'm I'm back to uh, you know, give give you some details about the play. The other detail is about the, and this this also will, you know, uh, talk about the gender question. How does the king appreciate the beauty of uh, <coughs> Chakuntala? And uh, see the quotation. He says to him, uh, he says to, to, to himself, her lips are fresh red buds. Her arms are tendrils. He is comparing the, the young woman with a plant. Impatient youth is poised to blossom in her limbs. You just see, and the youthfulness of the, of the woman, she is 18 as I said at that time, and the youthfulness is showing through her limbs, through her legs, through, through her feet, through her hands, through her face, so all, the, all, all these, and, and uh, also the waist and, 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 and the lower part of the back, is showing everything there, which, which means what? 
for today's viewer this would be reducing a woman to the level of the body and uh, this this is uh, all right and this is fine but then how the woman thinks what is her level of awareness and whether she can be angry and whether she can have a choice all these questions you know would, would emerge today from us you know who would not be bothered mainly about how a woman looks but also how a woman thinks and uh, gitanjali am i right when yeah, i say this definitely sir most definitely mm-hmm. and uh, so i think uh, the perspective which you have uh, created about this whole uh, kalidasa's uh, the, the writings and all they all depict that uh, whatever is shown through the literature it is very much uh, existent in the society mm-hmm. we have to relate it to how we are understanding how the relationships are uh, developing mm-hmm. what is the kind of uh, patriarchal um, infrastructure that was there at that point of time so this perspective really is uh, something which uh, everyone should relate to and this is why we call you uh, the eminent scholars like you to throw light upon these kind of issues uh, yes um, sir thank you uh, gitanjali and uh, this is the point that uh, as you rightly suggest this is the point that i was making you know that we'll uh, keep our uh, critical uh, acumen intact we would like to see all these texts you know from our angle and it's a great text therefore we'll have a lot to learn from it at the same time will be uh, using the text to raise questions that are relevant to us so this is the other point that i was making uh, about the situation there the the, the writer is uh, um, the king is speaking these lines he says to anusuya she is an ashramite and she is a friend of uh, 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 shakuntala he says despite my many wives on to the royal line rests he is now making clear as to why he wants to marry shakuntala there are two 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 women uh, uh, on whom his uh, you know existence rests at the time sea bound earth one woman is that narthi and your friend so he is being very you know uh, 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 at that point of time uh, very eloquent about his expression of love and he says i am totally for your friend your friend means uh, shakuntala or the earth earth means i am a king so I, the entire world you know is is under my feet but then the second woman the first woman is earth the second woman is, is is your friend so this is the kind of sweep you know that that, that the play has and a great king is talking and you know this is going to be one of the kings you know uh, who will uh, uh, later on uh, produce uh, people who will control the world still better for instance dushyant's son uh, will be bharat and uh, as, as the story goes you know that bharat is what uh, you know gave rise to the idea of bharat for us so uh, this is sun will be bharat and uh, this is shown in the uh, mahabharata and then this is uh, shown very clearly also here the king is angry in another act the act is five and he talks to the ashramite who is going with shakuntala and he says old woman now is a king he is not uh, the lover in the in, in the hermitage and he says old woman when naive female beasts show cunning he is talking about women and the women are shown as beasts and he is comparing you know women as wild animals with what can we expect of women who reason either women don't speak and when they speak when they reason what do you expect they are like animals don't cuckoos let other birds nurture their eggs and teach the chicks to fly cuckoos don't uh, 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 fulfill their own responsibilities to towards their young ones so they leave their nest next to the others so other other birds will look after them and the cuckoo will be quite happy so he is showing the cunningness of the women and cunningness of women in comparison with the cunningness of the female of the uh, 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 bird <coughs> uh, there in the uh, forest and shakuntala is angry and this is where kalidas is, is at his best he is giving full support to uh, 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 shakuntala and she says this and she says this to the husband and the king she says to him evil man you see everything distorted by your own ignoble heart who would want to imitate you now hiding behind your show of justice like a well overgrown with weeds this is the kind of anger so uh, 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 now i con- conclude this lecture by saying that a large number of questions are raised in this text and they are raised because we are reading the text of a great writer yeah. a writer who has you know uh, outlived his immediate surroundings and who has become relevant to us so i hope uh, you would have uh, seen you know the points where we can take off 
uh, from the display in order to consider our own problems and questions today. Thank you. I thank you, sir, for such a uh, nice and scholarly perspective on Kalidasa's Abhigyan Shakuntaram. I hope that the uh, viewers must have enjoyed and they have had a, a, a new perspective uh, thrown upon them. They can, they can think on these lines and this is really a very nice uh, presentation and a very enlightening uh, lecture from you, sir. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, we are, uh, viewers, we are going to meet you at the same, same time at 10 and uh, we'll have uh, the discussion on Ishma uh, Chuktai's uh, uh, short stories and we'll have uh, another uh, scholar with us and uh, this, uh, definitely Professor Anand Prakash is going to lead the lecture for us. Thank you so much.